Support Move University in the production of more video tutorials by making a financial contribution or by getting yourself one of these t-shirts. Details under the Support Move section on MoveUniversity.com. The link will be in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so general chemistry. Before we can study and understand the complexities of chemistry, we really need to know certain basics, including definitions and things like that. So this first series in the GChem series is about the basics and sort of things that you need to know in order to understand chemistry. We're going to start with matter. But before we can really talk about chemistry, we got to know, you know, what is chemistry? Simply put, chemistry is the study of matter. So what is matter, though? Matter is anything and everything that has mass and volume. And you might have heard those terms before, um, but if you haven't and you don't know what they are, the terms themselves will make more sense when we discuss how these things are measured. But now, why do chemists care about matter? Because it matters. <laughs> chemists care about what things, or what makes things what they are. They study substances, which are things that have a particular composition or a particular makeup. We'll talk more about the definition of substances and what kind of classifies or is classified as a substance. We'll talk about that later. Um, but they also study the the properties, the properties of substances. And these properties include both physical and chemical properties. So what is a physical property and what is a chemical property? Well, let's start with physical properties. Physical properties are characteristics a substance shows by itself without changing into some other substance or interacting with another substance. Okay, so this is pretty important. One really, really important part of this definition is um, the, the by itself bit. By itself and without changing. Those are important parts. So physical properties are characteristics of a substance that that substance shows by itself and it's, wherein it's not changing into something else or interacting with something else or some other substance. So some examples are color or density, boiling point, even melting point. Um, color, for instance, like water. Water is a clear, it, it's clear, right, when it's a liquid. Um, um, and also when it's solid as well. Um, that's, that's a physical property. Water's density at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure is one gram per milliliter. Um, that can vary slightly, but um, the point is these are physical properties. These are things that, these are characteristics of a substance that are independent of another substance interacting with this particular substance. I use the word substance a lot there, but hopefully I can kind of explain this with an example. Um, well, with an example of a physical change specifically. So. Physical changes are changes that occur when when the form of the substance changes, not its makeup or identity. So this is a, when this is an important part. The form changes, not the identity. Okay. So let's think about the example of freezing liquid water into solid ice. So a lot of people know that um, H2O is the chemical formula for water, um, and this little this little uh, in parentheses here is a little cursive L, which means liquid. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but water in the liquid form can turn into water in the solid form. And that's what happens when we're taking liquid water and turning it into solid ice. Isn't it still water? Yeah, it's still water. It hasn't changed its identity. That is a physical change. So, you know, water being a liquid at room temperature and a solid at really cold temperature, specifically colder than zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 273 Kelvin, <laughs> um, that is a physical property, whether it's a liquid or a solid. And this is a physical change, changing from liquid to solid. Its identity hasn't changed. It's still water. And that's what I meant by by itself, without changing into some other substance. It's still the same thing. Okay. Now let's talk about chemical properties. Chemical properties, as you might, might imagine, they're their characteristics a substance shows when interacting with other substances. So this, that's the important part of this definition, the interacting with other substances. Or when it's changed, that's also a really important term, into some other substance. So really, chemical properties are basically describe the reactivity of a certain 
substance. And there, there are, of course, chemical changes as opposed to physical changes. And chemical changes, chemical changes have a, another name, really. They're called chemical reactions. And so we're talking about when one substance interacts with another substance and changes to some other substance. It doesn't even have to interact with something necessarily um, as long as it changes um, its substance. But I think pretty much pretty much all the time it's interacting with something else. In fact, I have an example here of a chemical reaction. Um, and it, the example is the combustion of octane, which is gasoline. So if you take octane and oxygen um, and you put them together and you add a little bit of heat, what happens is that we change these two initial or these two initial substances that we start with, octane and oxygen, we change them into carbon dioxide and water. That's a chemical reaction. So it's a chemical property of octane, which is the the chemical for that is used for gasoline to power our cars and even lawnmowers and stuff. Um, but octane has a certain level of reactivity with oxygen, and if there's enough heat, it can cause this to basically explode um, and create carbon dioxide and water. And this, of course, this is a reaction that releases energy, which is another thing that we'll talk about later. But the point is that we start off, we start off with octane and oxygen, and those things are changed into carbon dioxide and water. We no longer have octane and oxygen. So it's a chemical property of octane, the way it reacts with oxygen. Next up, the three states of matter. So you may or may not have already known this, but the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. Um, and I think one of the simplest ways to kind of understand this is really to just talk about it in terms of an example. And the, the simplest example is, is water. So we know that water um, can exist as solid, a solid that we call ice, right? Um, and of course, it can exist as a liquid that we drink. And it can also exist as a gas, which is what we call water vapor. So I'll put all those little terms here as well. So here we got ice, solid, liquid water, and then uh, water vapor is the gas. OK, so what are some of the characteristics of you know solids and liquids and gas? What defines them? Well, solids, solids have a fixed shape. They have a fixed shape and volume. They have a fixed shape and volume. They do not take the shape of their containers. So if you put ice into like a beaker or a bucket, it's only going to take up as much space as it takes up as it's, it's in, you know, in its ice form. It's not going to take the volume of the container. It doesn't flow at all. It's a very fixed and definite shape and volume. Liquids, however, liquids, they they kind of flow, right? They conform to the shape of their container, um, but it occupies only its own volume, not the volume of the entire container in the way that a gas does, which we'll get to in just a second. So if you, t if you put a liquid into a cup or a beaker, uh, liquid water specifically, and you kind of you know swish around the the cup the 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 water will kind of or the the liquid will kind of you know go back and forth and kind of adhere to the the shape of the container if you have a round glass it'll take the shape of a round glass but it doesn't take the entire volume of the the container it doesn't take up the entire space of the container it only takes up its own volume and kind of conforms to the 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 shape of the container only to a certain extent okay Another thing about liquids is that they form what's called a surface, right? So you can have when you when you once you know at the top of its uh, you ha it takes the volume of its of its excuse me it takes the shape of its container to a certain extent, um, but it does have a surface that you can kind of clearly see. Gases, however, they they take um, the entire shape and volume of their containers. They fill the entire container. So if you have a small cup and you you know have it shut and you initially have some liquid in there, some liquid water, and you boil it and it all becomes uh, gaseous water vapor, uh, it'll, that water vapor will take up the entire volume of the container. And it, of course, takes the shape as well. 
because it fills the entire the entire space of its container. Um, and of course, because of this, it'll have no surface. So these are just some details. I, I don't want to go into too many um, uh, because this is just a video about the basics. But I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.